very, this is your favorite time of the year. What was, oh, that? what was that? Well, I heard no. Sounds like you voices. If you're here with us, I would like to know who I am speaking to. Could you tell me your name or a nickname you would like to be called? Hold on. Did it just say John? I don't know what my question meant. What's your favorite thing to do here? Oh my gosh, what is that? What is that? Can you point the rods in the direction that you're at? Where you're standing? Um. If there's somebody still here, just to confirm that it's not my hands moving or anything, could you cross the rods? Make them cross. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's weird, dude. Yeah, really? Hey, so before we get into the video, Dave and I just want to really share that we are in no way ghost hunters. That's not our thing. For those out there that do that, great, but that's not us. But also as a fan, I'm a huge fan of horror movies, more so than Dave. Dave found this really great experience for us to camp overnight at the real Conjuring House. And I will tell you, our experience, particular me as well, I felt like it was a very different experience than what a lot of folks online have portrayed at the real conjuring house and according to the new owner Jacqueline there's a lot more spirit activity on the grounds of the real conjuring house than the actual house itself so we were the first to camp overnight at the real conjuring house on the grounds and it was an interesting experience and I do have to say I have to be very open I went in as a true skeptic mm -hmm. for sure I'm always looking for natural explanations to things that happen but there were definitely things you'll see it in the video that happened in particular to Tanya that you really can't explain from that perspective and so and then something you want to even want to talk about today yeah. right even with me and it was definitely quite an experience yeah now you know if you see anything that we may have missed in there as well or just something in from our experience in the video please let us know in the comments below we love to kind of go back and check that out but I guess let's just get into our experience overnight camping at the real conjuring house What's up you guys? So Dave and I are here at a fun little spot called Johnny's Victory Diner in Rhode Island. And why are we in Rhode Island? Because we're gonna be staying at the Conjuring House, the real Conjuring House here in Rhode Island. And uh, for the first time ever, they have an opportunity that you can camp on the Conjuring House lot. So there's a trailer, there's tents. We're gonna be standing and staying in that vintage trailer. And uh, we have some time to kill, so we're here at Johnny's Victory Diner to learn exactly what this town has to offer. I'm excited. I got my weapon and I got my prayers. Cause if you don't run this town, they will walk all over you. So, what'd you get, babe? Well, I got uh, Johnny recommended actually. It's the uh, corned beef grilled cheese sandwich, which uh, looks and smells awesome. Can't wait to dive in. Now, what did you get? Mm -hmm. Mm. Well, I got the pork sandwich with tater tots, and the pork sandwich is great. It's smoked and delicious. There's a lot of good things I like on top of that there, for sure. I love the sauerkraut. I'm a big fan of tater tots. And we both got a bowl of this homemade corn chowder. It is delish. You already finished yours. That's why I didn't show I did. his, but he just worked it. But I am, right yeah, there. see? Done. <laughs> done. Absolutely done and full. So we're going to dive into this deliciousness, and then I think we should figure out, you know, since we have a lot of time before hitting the Conjuring House, we should probably go check out what this, uh, what this town is about. Maybe learn some of the history of the Conjuring, the real Conjuring House. Yeah, I agree with that. Mm. Run now, log, gotta run on. Keep on running till the sun goes down. Run now, log, better run on. Run all day till you can't be found. Run now, log, gotta run on. Keep on. Trying to read this 
sign here. I uh, will just put a picture of it. I'm trying to read it right here or a video of it. But it's called Lake Char Go Ga Go Manchu A Uga Uga Go Cha Banga Ganga Maga. It's the side of the road in New Hampshire. And I used to stop and talk to him and he'd kind of tell me his little tricks and his little secrets. And then I bought a little uh, small, tiny little barrel smoker at Lowe's for about $250 or so. And uh, started kind of playing with that and cooking in the backyard for my friends. And everybody was like, oh, this is really good. That um, is so cool. Yeah, so we moved back. My dad got sick. We came back to Rhode Island to be with family. And we started doing, there's a place called Hill's Tavern in Gloucester, Rhode Island. And we started doing barbecue in, in the parking lot. Under a tent, my wife was at the register. My two boys were there. It was a whole kind of family thing. It was really neat. She had a kitchen that she wasn't using. So she said, come out, use my kitchen. It cost me $100 a month to use her kitchen for everything. We were doing between six and 800 pounds of meat a week. Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> then that got purchased by somebody else. They had their own kitchen that they brought some people in. And at the same time, this was for sale. So we said, all right, it's been around a long time. It's kind of like buying a franchise. If my yeah. barbecue doesn't work, yeah. at least I know the breakfast thing is going to work. Right. But this took off. And in 2020, we got uh, number one barbecue in Rhode Island by Food and Wine. Sweet. I mean, well, you know, barbecue is a thing. Barbecue is a thing. <laughs> So we have a rub that's got uh, 13 spices. We make it ourselves. Maybe we could sneak a piece from over here. Maybe my little taste. You, uh, we'll, 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 well, say maybe. well, you might be able to. All the pork and the brisket, that's not ready. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't want to try Smells great, though. Smells great. <laughs> So Dave and I were just talking to John, the owner of this restaurant, and he had an interesting story about the restaurant. There were actually a couple of interesting stories, but one in particular about the basement of this place, which I think really kind of sets the kickoff for us to learn more about this town, more about that there, you know, this the believability of spirits um, that exist and kind of sets off, I guess, our adventure at the Conjuring House. You'll see. I love how they have these signs here. This town hall that way, Conjuring House. Here it is right there. The Conjuring House, right there. But I think it's not that way. It's that way. <laughs> uh, hi, this is Johnny's Victory Diner. I uh, just wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the building here that we have that dates back to the uh, late 30s. The story goes that Mr. Murphy was the first one to buy this, uh, buy this diner, and it was a couple of lots down. And uh, he moved the diner here after he purchased this lot and cleared it. And in those days, there was no real way to move a building. So what they did was laid telephone poles down, put the building on top of it, and rolled it into the, the place that it's in now. Wow. Pretty neat. So since then, it's changed owners pretty considerably over the years. A lot of people, including my wait staff, believe that there are spirits here. So when we purchased the diner coming up on five years ago, my wife kind of believes in a lot of that stuff, and she's very spiritual. I mean, not be quite that way but she had the building blessed and she brought in a mother-daughter team that had a, a speech recognition box we did it at night we had a bunch of people here we went down into the basement and uh, they believed to have heard uh, the voice of Mr. Lamoureux, Mr. Ray Lamoureux. This, uh, the diner was Ray's Country Kitchen at one point back in the 60s and 70s. And Mr. and Mrs. Lamoureux got divorced. Ray lived here for a while and they believe that his spirit still resides here. So she still comes downstairs every once in a while and says hi to Ray as she just enters the basement. Maybe I believe it a little bit because I say hi to Ray every once in a while too. I can't lie. So. Yeah, and you may save him a piece of brisket every now and then, right? <laughs> Ray seems to like the barbecue. <laughs> So we're here at the Burrowville Historic Cemetery in Rhode Island, and it's where Bathsheba and her family, the Sherman family, have been laid to rest. Now, in the Hollywood movie of The Conjuring, Bathsheba is portrayed as the evil entity that lives in The Conjuring house that possessed the parent mother to kill her children. And the story went basically because it was told that she was a witch and before she died, she took out her children who... <laughs> Little bee buzzing around here. I know, the bee keeps on coming at us here. It's like every time we keep talking about this, there's a wasp that keeps flying over, landed on Dave's head, circled me a bit, and then flew over to a destination. It might be like a wasp scatter trying to find a home. That's what we think. Wait, I think it's coming back again. It is really weird, Dave. So anyway, where were we? So, in the movie, Bathsheba's portrayed again as this evil demon, demonic presence, actually possesses the parent mother to kill her kids. And 
that was kind of the story about Bathsheba. She was sort of a witch and she sacrificed her kids at a very young age to basically mock God's greatest gift. And following that, she hung herself. Now that's obviously movie, movie drama because from what we read, there's a, a very different story. Now, contrary to the movie, there's actually no evidence at all that Bathsheba ever lived in or was associated with the Conjuring House. And while it is true that Bathsheba unfortunately did lose two of her children at a very young age, that was not uncommon at that time in history. And there's absolutely no evidence that there was any inquest into a suspicious death of any of her children. So Bathsheba's grave, as you notice, little different headstones and her family members here, and that's because it was vandalized a couple times. And I think the final time was broken to three pieces, so they just removed those, hence there's no headstone uh, on Bathsheba's grave. So I just wanted to quickly say for those that don't know, so her kids, uh, her children were really young. I think one was, and I believe his name was Edward. Edward was one years old, roughly one years old. And I think Julia was days old or something to that effect. And the movie, the Hollywood version of The Conjuring is loosely written off of Ed and Lorraine Warren's accounts of uh, The Conjuring House. So Ed and Lorraine Warren, they were demonologists. So if you had a spirit and you wanted to figure out what was going on, well, you would contact Ed and Lorraine Warren. And that's apparently what happened with this family in this Conjuring House. But just, you know, trying to separate some fact from fiction. Um, and we're still trying to understand that ourselves here. It's very interesting. I do love scary movies. So it's kind of neat to see the movie itself, but also to try and learn some of the real history behind it. So I'm excited. This is kind of building up to us going to the Conjuring House, the real Conjuring House, to stay overnight. For the first time, again, you guys, the first time ever they're having this, where you can actually camp on the grounds of the Conjuring House, the real Conjuring House. So we're doing it in a trailer. Oh my gosh. Woo. It seems like there's like no street lights on this property. Like on the streets right, as you're coming yeah. down so at night, this could be really like cool and chilling. Oh boy, all right, are we close? Mm. We're just your guest, I'll meet you on this one. Mm, so now we ponder on what we learned today and we wait. I mean, the, the Conjuring, the real Conjuring house is pretty strict on time. No, they are. This is actually their opening night mm -hmm. for the camping experience. I think they call it ghost camping. Mm -hmm. It's like ghost camping at the ghost Conjuring camping. house. And uh, so we're super excited about it to really try out, see what it's like. But yeah, when they said get there at 445, we arrived about an hour early and they said, you guys come back at 445. Yes, come back. We're so, like, uh, well, we yeah. ate at a really nice spot and uh, we <laughs> don't know much of the area. And he's like, oh, well, you know, you gotta leave the property. <laughs> <laughs> I think basically because they want to know who's coming in. And we told them that we're part of the experience that's about to go down. Their very first experience staying in the trailer. I saw his eyes kind of do this when he said, we're staying in the trailer. He's like, mm. I'm like yeah. <laughs> so we're very excited to see what that's about. So we're going to snack. I'm going to do some more reading. I think it'd be kind of fun to learn a little bit more about it. They do have tours they offer. Exactly. So there was actually, cool. there was a tour going on when we arrived, mm -hmm. right? Just a to kick tour off. of the house, right? But uh, of course, we're going to be all in the grounds, mm -hmm. which is going to be pretty, pretty yeah. interesting yeah. for sure. Now, let me ask you a question. When you sure. came in, you saw those signs, right? And then you parked. Did you feel anything? Well, I think, I mean, I'm definitely feeling a little kind of tense. I think I just, you know, I have some, I definitely have some anxiety. So I think it's more around that, but I definitely, you know, I'm not gonna say it's paranormal or anything like that, but I certainly felt some anxiety. Hmm. That's normally the opposite. Normally I would feel that. I don't feel anything. I felt fine. I couldn't even sat That's there good. and it was like beautiful grounds. So it felt really neat. Obviously you couldn't see much from where the parking lot was, but I feel I'm pretty excited to. I'm excited to see our home for the night. Mm -hmm. We go out for a beer, it's so clear when you I'm feeling a little off. Uh, 
anxious now. Now I am feeling anxious because of the trailer, which is where we're staying. It is vintagey old indeed. Look at that. It is. Oh man, it is very old. It's just stuck in the woods here. Oh my god, right. look at that. It's coming up. Oh my god. So each of these places has a rating factor. Of of scary factor, I guess they call it. I guess so, yeah. So let's see. She says we can park here as long as we're not blocking. I think we had a six or something. We had a six. I think we're number six. Oh my goodness. All, All right. right. Well, we're we number six. All right, welcome mm -hmm. home. Thanks. Welcome home. Woo. So getting out. All right, we're moving goes. in. Moving in. Moving into our new home for the night. Moving into the new home for the night. Number six. So this has a, a we, fear we, factor of we, six. We seem to stay in a lot of rooms that are, have sixes in them. We, that's true. Oh my gosh, that's true. Like the cruise. Six, six, six. Ten, six, six, six. Ten, six, six, six. <laughs> All right. Normally I, I'd let you have me go first, but let's have you go first. Welcome. <laughs> right. And we'll give you guys a tour in just a minute. So. Dave is gonna set up a little camera here facing just our camp, because you gotta be mindful not to capture the other guest. Um, but I have to say this, we are the first to step on the property here as guests for the gamping at the Real Conjuring House. How's it feel, Dave? I'm excited. I, right? I, we love camping, so yeah. this is kind of perfect, and it, it's beautiful ground. Oh, it's amazing. Right, right. and it all, it all kind of started right as you signed in, and there's yeah. this massive waiver you got to sign, because yeah. it's you, the, the owner, Jacqueline, she really respects the spirits, and she wants it to be in the same, respected the same way. Like, she wants folks that are coming here respect the spirits the same way she does. So, hence, there's a waiver you got to sign, which really does uh, put things in context. But the moment you do that, you dip your hand in a bucket, and you're handed you have to close your eyes and you pick a bracelet out and a bracelet's a green bracelet with white inscription on it and it has whatever you draw yourself to pick that is I guess the first sign of energy so the bracelet I got says one day all the hard work will pay off and I'm like yeah that's a good one and Dave got it says believe in yourself and you will be unstoppable Unstoppable, Dave we know that and that's what Tanya always tells me yeah see so it's already off to a good start you guys believe that? <laughs> I do so there it is that's Dave's little set up boom it's got the batteries it's gonna capture any motion that may come towards us there we go. got the little light going on there it is it's all set but we'll probably get that later on <laughs> <laughs> otherwise it's gonna catch us coming out all the time yes exactly there they go again <laughs> you know since we're the first one the first ones here i think we should do a little tour of the property i like before it before the actual physical tour begins so we can kind of kind of feel things ourselves I, kind of I agree. Oh, look at those tents. Yeah, the wow. tents are really cool. Definitely glamping there. Yeah. And uh, we're going to hear a story later. We already got a little sneak peek of it, but we're going to let the owner talk about this tree. Many of you may already know about this particular right. tree right here, but we'll save that for later. <laughs> so campsite number six, we are at five, four, three. Looks like there's going to be a nice big old... Oh. I mean, it turned out to be a beautiful day. It's it's absolutely beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And look over here. This is going to be our, uh, I guess, our everybody gets together for a little campfire. Yeah, I'm this excited. It's pretty big. I mean, look how high that wood is stacked. That's going to be quite the bonfire, huh? It's going to be amazing. <laughs> look at that. Woo. Actually camping on the real conjuring house. Wow. And it kind of turned this way. And of course, you can see the tent right there. And then going up there is the house itself up on the top of the hill. We both try to pretend you're just a guy And I am just your friend What if all of my love is yours? What if you are the one I try? So, I think we briefly mentioned before that each site here has a rating in terms of, how would you call it? In terms of like a... I don't know if it's haunting haunted, or, a haunted or kind factor, of fear factor. A fear factor, right. Where a lot of energy, a lot of activity. Where the most energy or activity um, is placed in the lot. So there's different spots here for sure, different ratings for different zones. Ours is pretty simple, so like a six. It's one of the six. lower ones, a six. So that's probably good for us. But there's others that are off in the back that have some of the highest uh, energy. And we're gonna go back there in a little bit. It might be fun to learn, go back there after the tour, or maybe just get a little briefing of it before the folks who are gonna right. be there and jump into it. And, and according to the, the owner, right, she says the lands are actually more haunted and have more activity than the actual house itself. Oh yeah, right, yeah. So. Oh, and speaking of which, she said pay attention at night too because you'll hear some folks, she hasn't heard it, but she's heard other folks say they've heard children laughing and drums from like, this was uh, drums, almost Native American type drumming going on. So yeah, we're gonna try and pay, pay attention to all that. The windows are open. <laughs> exactly. So we're gonna hear it if it's there. Oh, so check this out. Dave, what does that say? 
it's uh, it's basically the pet cemetery. It says in memoriam, the pets of Old Brook Farm. Within these grounds lie the remains of the beloved animals who, like their owners, will always be part of our history. Oh, so it shows like yeah, dogs, Dela's cats, dog. sheep, and horses. Yeah. Oh, wow. And we actually oh. have some. Uh, there's a grave the right there, and you don't go past it, so they have it blocked off. But beloved pet right there. Whoa, mama. That's pretty cool. So, hence this one here. It's up on a platform. This one's called what? The Pet Cemetery? Pet Cemetery. Wow. This is all different. It even has a sitting area. And I know. It looks pretty cool. Pretty cool. But the tent's on a platform. Love it. Take a look over here. You can kind of see that. I'm impressed. How are you feeling? I think it's fun. It feels like some adventure. Yeah. I think we're, it's going to feel like a little, uh, we're going to have a huge bonfire tonight, like we're camping out. Yeah. Here's yeah. some of the stories. Exactly. Um, right. I guess the part where you kind of say separate a lot of the fact from fiction, so we'll hear it from like the owner, and I guess, I'm assuming some of the people that are working right. here as well that have a lot more information on this property outside of some of the information I think we've already learned from the pamphlets we read. I'm excited for the uh, the tour. Right? The, the tour is going to be fun. Through. That's, That's going to be so much fun. It's coming up later now. We might not be able to film that because there's going to be others around unless everyone's okay with it. Right. So. I'm not exactly. If we can't film it, we'll kind of talk, we'll about, talk it after. about it after. Exactly. And we'll take you to all those spots. Stay tuned. In the morning when I get up, I wish that we could stop and take ease. Day. All right, so I have pulled up. Dave led me to pull up the website that kind of talks about the ratings we were talking about. So each one has a rating that's called the Fright Factor, and it goes up to number 10. So we're heading right now, which is called Beyond the Bridge, and the Fright Factor is 10. And they're a special kind of fear. So it says, Nightfall turns the property across the bridge into one of of a sinister kind. Be prepared for shadow figures, footsteps, drumming, and howling animals. Huh. We recommend bringing a respectful offering, something biodegradable, and invoking protection against anything suspicious that might try to lure you deeper and deeper into the woods. Whoa, that already makes me nervous. Makes you a little nervous? That already makes me a little nervous, Dave. I mean, like... Like I said, this, the brook is, is absolutely beautiful. Now you see, of course, you see quite a few of the dead trees on the side there. But um, one thing I think about, it might get some mosquitoes tonight to put on that insect repellent. Yeah. There's gonna be well that makes me nervous too. But, <laughs> but that was interesting to read that. So let's see how we feel. We're just gonna walk across the way. I think there's two tins back here. Right. Someone just moved in. But let's see what kind of um I think it's seven and up in the name. Right, these are both ten, right? So you come across yeah, here. So once you come across this bridge, it's like a the fear factor is ten. Wow. Right? interesting to say sinister kind. Sinister in a sense that they want to lure you back into the woods. Sinister? For what? Hmm. Well, I don't think I'll be walking back here at midnight. I'll be walking back here at late at night. No, head up this way. We'll go a little bit towards the tent. Yeah. yeah. You can see they kind of carved out these trails probably not too long ago that they were the developing. Mower and put the, you know how to see the sticks that they put down the Yes. Yeah. I see. won't go too far here. I see someone has, has moved in. Yeah. And I'm already setting up. And that's deeper into the woods. So this happens to be seven and eight where we're at right now. It's probably the most sinister. It's interesting because it's right across the bridge. Right. And we are, we're next to the bridge. Exactly. We're right across yeah. the other side of the bridge. So interesting. So how are you guys feeling? Are you feeling like me? I'm getting a little sweaty on my palms. Or maybe it's just because I'm mentally thinking, oh my goodness gracious, like we're we're in a level 10 spot. I don't know what that means if you're a believer of it or not. But how are you feeling? How, how are you? Are you getting a little nervous right now before nightfall begins? Let us know in the comments below. You can see a lot of old stone walls back here too. Right, probably going back to, I'm assuming when this land was probably farmed, like long abandoned. When I get home, always hope to find you all alone and out of harm's way. Every time I look around, so this is number seven. Walk down. I don't think anyone's in this one. Ooh, number seven, but it's number ten in the fright factor. Number ten in the fright factor. I love how they did the. Kind of the... But this is amazing. I mean, these gorgeous flowers sit right here, right here. Yeah. It's one spot. Gorgeous. Okay, so let me just tell you guys right off the bat, like our mission here, we're in no way, shape or form trying to, you know, pretend, make this feel like make-believe. Like our whole goal is to kind of really be here and experience what it's like camping, ghost camping here on the real Conjuring property and uh, basically what Jacqueline has kind of put together. So we're really, really excited to learn about this. I mean, obviously, once again, you guys know, I'm a big horror fan. I love horror movies. 
So this obviously is a real, the real side of the real conjuring house. And uh, hi, and I'm sure Gabo. <laughs> It's ready to learn. Oh, it's gonna be amazing. It's gonna well, be. You look like you're part of the team with your radio. Oh, I forgot. Look. I'm ready. Yeah, they gave they us. They give you radios. They gave us kind of the radio here, so we can communicate. They can communicate with us. We can communicate with them. And it has to be on channel 13. Yes, yeah, channel 13, channel right there. Channel 13, and we're not kidding. Channel. I'm not sure if you can see that, but channel there 13. it is. Channel 13. It has to be on channel 13. <laughs> so I was saying before. Look. So here's the bridge yeah. that we have to cross. And right across this is level 10. So on this side, that's level 10 fear factor. I don't 100% know why. So maybe they'll tell us as to why. I'm almost gonna, if I'm to guess, it's because that's the most energy they feel back there or it's sinister. I, I have no idea. But on this side, which is interesting, where Dave is, we're walking right now, just to the right across this bridge is our camp. That's I mean, where we are, yeah. uh, what? It's cool. You can see one thing that's cool is along the path, you can see all the lights they have set up. But that's I'm still on the fear fact that is right across the bridge. I don't know. I don't How know. come that is 10? Yeah, well, six. That is six. We're in a safe zone. Oh. Although it doesn't look it. I mean, that's a vintage trailer. Pretty vintagey. It's pretty vintagey. Yeah. <laughs> They've set up solar powered lights really all across the pathways and the properties here. So probably gonna look really cool at night. Don't you think? Kind of walking around with the lights kind of shining. Looks like on your feet quite a bit too here, right? I feel like it's gonna be. It's gonna be eerie. Very ominous. It like, will ooh, be. Ooh, my goodness gracious! Like, imagine the shining lights on the running water, right. like on that running water. And this water is very black. If you want to go down to the uh, river's edge? There's actually oh, a cool. chair set up. Yeah, let's do that. Head down there. A little comfy spot. Right along the river's edge. Right by the river. Down by the river. to note if you're coming to come uh, I guess camping ghost camping there's a lot of poison ivy on the property just be aware of that you can kind of see here uh, right at this tree a big poison ivy vine and of course the three leaves is a telltale but also you can take a look at that hairy vine going up the tree typically that's going to be from a poison ivy branch they also have some brand new propane grills which um, we actually didn't bring anything to grill but if you're coming here you can bring something to grill they have some nice picnic tables to hang out at as well so just keep that in mind Up, of course, is the real Conjuring house, and then you can see it looks very different from the movie The Conjuring for sure. Do you think, babe? Oh, it's definitely different. Completely different location. Different. I think the movie is uh, a different house completely. It's in actually in North Carolina. I think that's right. Somewhere in North Carolina, or this one, and it looks very well maintained. This one. Yeah, this looks actually really nice. It looks really nice. I think the one in the movie was a White House. It was a White House. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's funny because of some of the pictures from the parent family. They actually look like they were in a White House. It does look that. I you know. You see them on the steps or a stoop. I'm not sure if this has been, you know, renovated since then on the outside. Right. Got me. <laughs> or maybe I'm just colorblind. And if, if people watching know, let us know in the comments below. Yes. We appreciate it. Wow. We just actually jumped into a space for the tour of the house. They had two spots left. So Dave and I jumped in on this tour and wow, that was uh, pretty powerful. It was very interesting to learn the history of each room and right. what went on in each room and which room had the most activity, which room had playful energy, the basement with the supposed the crooked neck, the crooked neck guy. It's hard to kind of talk about each room individually, but just know collectively it was a very interesting story. Yeah, no, it's the amount of history too. And just the the old bones of that how old, old it is bones. and you can hear like if you're you know, going into a room by yourself in a server you can hear freaks and cracks all throughout of course each room has its own vibe and feeling mm -hmm. right i mean some of it's just you go upstairs and the, you know if you're if you're tall oh yeah they're very low ceiling rooms yeah and you can feel very kind of almost um claustrophobic, claustrophobic in a bit kind of tightening in on you yeah. and but some of the stories there and also just from the, the the tour guide himself talking about experiences he's had oh yeah was you know really amazing 
amazing to oh, hear as well. It was so. it was very very uh, it's very interesting. And I you know if you're a non-believer, I get it. But if I think if you were a non-believer and you heard the stories and you see the passion behind a lot of these folks as they talk about their experiences, what happened in the house and the energy and and we're staying here tonight on the grounds <laughs> and it's the first time it's happening. He made he pointed out like it's the first time that this is happening. So we're interested to see what happens. And he was like, I ought to stay out here. <laughs> I know. Well, and of course, there was that w one little kind of closet space where oh yes the child would play. Yeah. And so and you sat I went in there. In there. <laughs> what, how'd you feel in that room? You know, it's it's funny. I and it was I didn't close the door. Probably if I had closed the door completely, it would have been even that much more intense. But uh, you could definitely see how that could be a fun area for a child to play. I didn't. Right. No, I didn't. Nothing really happened where the child like threw anything at me yeah, like you hear. But uh, you know, it's, it's but in, of course not being a ghost hunter too. Yeah. Right, just kind of experience it as a lay person yeah. right, going up. So yeah. that was fun. Well, that's that's true. I mean, I know he had asked the question non believers and you didn't raise your hand, but I definitely know you're like a, a non believer. I'm a bit of a skeptic. Yeah, but still, but I we'll felt see. like, you know, some of the things you were feeling in the house there or even going into that closet, you got quiet. So you're like right. thinking, you know, a non believer, but you're just, well, maybe even it's if, just respecting the well, space. Well, even if I'm a, a, can be a skeptic, I can still get freaked out at night and, you know, t talking about ghost stories. Oh, that's true. <laughs> well, we got some good ones coming up tonight by the fire. And so. actually, I think the fire's lit now. Oh. I can smell, yeah, let's go over there. Let's do it. Dinner by the big bonfire and ghost stories. So we're heading back to our home tonight. Now, this is a little pool area. Apparently, sometimes we'll hear children's voices back here. But here's our home. It's starting to get, get uh, darker and darker. Fortunately, we have a lot of flashlights. That's good. Um, if you go within a vicinity that is kind of giving off this little field of energy, if you go within it, it will light up like that. Yep. Oh my so he's showing you how it works right there. Wow. If we ask anybody to walk by it and it starts to go off, just take note of that something might be happening. I also have two pairs of dowsing rods here, if anybody wants to try those. Um, it's an old form of communication, originally used by water, which is actually still used by construction workers to this day to find water under the ground. I mean, they would cross if you go by water or on top of water. You say, can you show me yes? It'll move a certain way to show you yes. Can you show me no? It'll do a different way to show you no. And um, that will be your yeses and nos. And if you establish communication, they will move to your answers. Wow. Give you answers if you have questions. So we can try that really too. Cool. So you yeah. wanted to try? So these are dowsing rods, copper rods. They shift towards wherever the energy is or wherever you ask a question. And I did ask a question. I asked where the children played or laughed. Yeah, I just asked it again. And look, it's going right over to our camp. That's where our camp is. That's where we're camping. That's Yikes. Did you see that? I did. Whoa. And you kept, no, you kept your hands no. totally straight. Wow. Yeah, they moved over. Not. I saw that. So now we're having walkie-talkies. We all have these walkie-talkies, and the walkie-talkie keeps going off. A uh, young man just went off into the, the back over there with a reader, and it's going off. And I just asked the question. Did you see that? I asked I the did question see that. where yeah, the moved, children yeah. play. And it's like, where do the children play? And I'm not moving my hands. You see, not moving. Look, they're both pointing, Dave. Wow. Where's... My husband. Kind of. Oh my God! Did you see that? I did. I don't want to play with these anymore. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got going on over there? This is, I believe, it's called an EMF reader, like electromagnetic field oh, yeah. reader, and uh, so it's supposed to it will flash. Like if, if there's a electro field comes through it, you'll see how it goes like that. I'm hitting it, creating it, oh, but yeah. but it will kind of flash like that yeah I haven't gotten that yet so I'm just kind of walking around to see if I can and it looks like there's a grid over to oh yeah whoa so that's something that, and if it, something walks by that you'll see like a you'll see shadow. like a shadow wow between the dowsing rods and this is where they said they heard the sound All right back this way whoa look at that grid that looks a little <laughs> interesting I do too I think it's me but if I walk past the dot is it gonna go off so it doesn't pick up humans we had this experience happen one night. Oh, you told them that? About the drumming? Oh, you did? Mm-hmm. Oh, I well, usually tell them when we get to the bridge. <laughs> I've never been to the bridge with you, so I wouldn't know. Please so, tell um, it. Though with the drumming coming up to the employee quarters one night. I didn't yeah, hear it was, that. It was really cool. So no one was in the house, and uh, we heard this drumming coming from the woods, and we've heard it about three or four times now uh, in total. 
and we start hearing it coming from the woods. No one's in the house, and it's getting closer and closer to the house, all the way up to the staff door, and all of a sudden, all the breakers in the house flipped and freaked us out. All the security system went down. We thought somebody uh, was on the property or something, and nobody was there. Uh, we went outside. Uh, I walked around and checked. Nothing. So stuff like that happens uh, quite frequently. Yeah, and especially here with the bridge. So there's a big theory that uh, running water, you know, can um, create this energy. Uh, so of course, uh, this is going to be a great spot to uh, to do that. So we'll do a little experiment, uh, see if we can record a, a spirit voice. So we'll just use, so if anyone has like a voice memo app, if you ever go to a place that you believe might have some activity or something, uh, just record some audio on your phone or something and um, play it back with some good headphones when you get home and sometimes you'll hear a voice that, um, that wasn't there, that you didn't hear uh, in real time. So what we're going to do is I'm going to ask everybody to kind of spread out along this bridge a little bit. So kind of make a little circle so everybody has their own little spot. Say dead or anything. Think of a question that you would ask somebody if you could talk to somebody that's now deceased. Um, it could be somebody from a different time period, anything you'd like. Yeah, and the trick is just to talk to them like they're still alive, like you're meeting a new person uh, for the first time. and. Um, you know, kind of be creative uh, with your questioning, because uh, usually that's the that's the type of questions that get answers. So I'm going to start the recording up, and then we'll just kind of go around in a circle. The important thing is leave about five seconds in between uh, each uh, question. So every time I raise my hand, that'll be the next person's turn to uh, to ask a question. So let me start this up. And if you don't want to do it, just say All right, pass. EVP session on the bridge. Uh, this is the 22nd of June, uh, and we have a small group of people. And we're going to go around. Hello, spirits. How many of you are with us tonight, right here on the bridge? Did you have any? Do you have any siblings? Spirit, is this your favorite time of the year? Spirit, are you at peace here? What is your name? hearing something back there. Do you want people on the property? Did you live on the property? Do you want me on the property? <laughs> <laughs> Just cover all bases while we're here. Oof, I know, I'm getting a very weird feeling. Um, pass, please. If you're here with us, I would like to know who I am speaking to. Could you tell me your name or a nickname you would like to be called? anybody in the woods behind us, feel free to come a little closer. That's just regular people talking. I have one. I have one. All right. What's your favorite thing to do here? It sounds like somebody's like moving Smoothing, around, yeah. twig yeah. snapping, like... All right. So we'll listen to it real quick. We can get a little closer if you guys want. If we get anything, then... We'll clip you it don't and want to do it. Alright, EVP session on the bridge. Uh, this is the 22nd of June, uh, and we have a small group of people, and we're going to go around. Hello, Spiris. How many of you are with us tonight? Right here on the bridge. Did you have any do you have any siblings? Spirit, is this your favorite time of the year? What was that? Is that, well, is that, that on the here? recording or is that over I don't there? Know. No, that was on the recording. Um, Spirit, are you at peace? No, before this. Is this your favorite time of the year? No, I, don't I think know. it was over. Was that real? Yeah. yeah. I heard no. Sounds like voices. No? What? I heard no. Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't say it. Did you guys hear it? What is your name? Hearing something back there. Do you want? 
happen. Did you live on the property? Do you want me on the property? <laughs> <laughs> Just cover all bases while we're here. If you're here with us, I would like to know who I am speaking to. Could you tell me your name or a nickname you would like to be called? You hear that whisper? Yeah, wait a minute. It's like in between. Is the water in if you're here with us, should be helping. I would like to know who I am speaking to. Could you tell me your you name that or a nickname you would like to be called? Right there. No, There's a whisper. There's two of them. Talking. If you're here with us, I would like to know who I am speaking to. Could you tell me your name or a nickname you would like to be called? Oh, Did it just say John? Did it wow. Say John? Whoa. Wait a minute. Okay. Listen, listen. If you're here with us, I would like to know who I am speaking to. Could you tell me your name or a nickname you would like to be called? John. Do you like hear it? It's yes. wicked quick. It's twice as I'm talking. John. Mm -hmm, wow. Is anybody in the woods behind us? Feel free to come a little closer. It's just regular people talking. I have one. I have one. All right. No, that was. I heard, I heard tapping. I heard tapping. <laughs> Feel free to come a little closer. What's your favorite thing to do here? Oh my gosh, what is that? What is that? What's your favorite thing to do here? Is that a sh I don't know, are we being shushed? Yeah. <laughs> I'm crying. I'm trying to sleep. <laughs> wow. wow, that's all right. So we got something. Yeah. So it's it's rare to catch catch a, a voice like that. So what I'll do now nice. is I'll I'll kind of cut it and then amp it up so we can hear it a little better and kind of play around with it a little bit. I feel like you're being oh my goodness gracious! Oh my gosh! Yeah, oh, that's weird, twice. dude. It was yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, really soft. Well, that light. Was so we just asked a question about uh, someone was we heard crunching out right off in that direction and he has the the rods and he asked the question if they're out there come close and they crisscross the rods crisscross oh, oh can you point the rods in the direction that you're at where you're standing Hello. Hi. Hi. Have we spoken with you before? Are you still standing here? Where are you standing right now? Can you make the rods move if this is a female? Can you make the rods move if this is a male? Are you Native American? No. Yeah, it might be a yes. Might be a yes. If there's somebody still here, just to confirm that it's not my hands moving or anything, could you cross the rods? Make them cross? Thank you. Thank That's you. cool. That cool. That's very neat. You hear that? I do. Just got quiet. What is that? Ooh, no, that, that's a frog. Yeah, we have a little pool of water up there. A lot of uh, yeah. night, oh. a lot of night noises here. There's a lot of night noises. Yes. You got a lot of oh, night noises. Yeah. A lot of. There's definitely.
Welcome to our little abode here at the Real Conjuring House in this vintage trailer at night. We, we got our lights set up all over the place. Got our gallon of water that they provided. Thank you very much, Jacqueline. Lights, snacks, radio, food in our bag, cold pizza, baby. This is cold where we're going to be sleeping tonight. Now, I wish there were some blinds out there because, you know, people are going to be walking out there investigating and I uh, just might catch a little glimpse of my booty. We might be <laughs> buck naked in here. Might get a glimpse of some radioactive... <laughs> 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 Disturbance going on. Wait, hold it still. <gasps> no, I just turned it oh, off. Okay, and on. scared me. I'm like, oh. oh. Don't say this pizza radioactive. Is it pizza radioactive? No electrical energy. No there. energy there. How about a phone? That would probably do it. Usually. Ooh, I don't know if I want to see any electrical activity going on here. But cold pizza. You kind of hit it. Got twin beds. Oh, back there, you guys, is the bathroom. They open that door real quick. They just so you get a glimpse. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. Non-functioning bathroom. Big window. Old school. Just kind of close everything off so people don't use the toilet. But, hey, it's a vintage camper. It's cool. Um, They did tell us that, you know, a lot of times, will they hear the most activity, or they start to feel there's more activity from sounds and things on the property, happens around midnight. So, what time is it now? It's around hmm. midnight. 11.47. That's in 10 minutes. It's around midnight. So, it's around midnight. Enjoy the pizza. What's going on? Kind of a little bit, yeah. You don't look good. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Huh, definitely. We're up to the... Uh, we saw how much of the orange one. Hold yeah, on. Like it out. Whoa. Getting nervous? No. Actually. <laughs> <sighs> what do you think? So it's after midnight now. It's after midnight. Uh, the EMF's gone nuts. It actually just, just spiked again. Did it really? Yeah, the EMF has like gone a little crazy. But I don't know. It's been pretty quiet. Yeah, it's, like, very, it's very cool. There's been a few bugs hitting the windows. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We got to come in and I'm trying to get in, into the light here. But what? It's time to I'm shut tired. things down. And, oh my gosh. What? They do it again? Yes. Oh yeah, look at that. Here's something like making noise. You go. Da -da 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 -da. My stomach. Something over there. It's like. Da -da 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 -da. You don't hear it. Maybe it's the jackery. It might be the jackery. Yeah. Um. Oh, nothing on this today, man. I'll just keep it charged up. I'm getting under my covers. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for Mama too to go under those covers. I'll let you turn off the lights. Okay. <laughs> Good night. Good night, baby. Mm. Can I sleep with you? <laughs> <laughs> You're nervous. Uh, Babe. Yeah. Can you believe we're sleeping at the Conjuring House? No, I can't. Like, seriously? No, I can't. Right? Like, fully. Moly. In the woods. I know. In a vintage. In a vintage old. old trailer. camper trailer. Yeah. 1968. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. I can't even see you. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, babe. Mm. How'd you sleep? How'd you sleep? Not bad. We only had to uh, get up once to head out into the woods. I know. <laughs> well, because I've been holding it for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a little nervous to go back out there again. Hey. Mm, so you slept well? Yeah. Mm. Slept pretty well. I think we woke up like right at 3 o'clock. That was interesting. So it was like 2, what, 54? 2 54 in the morning. And we both woke up like at the same time. And I felt awake. Right. I felt yeah, we wide both awake. Kind of felt awake a little bit. Mm. But I think it's time to get up. It looks so. Look at look out there. It just looks so like gloomy out there. And rainy. Like a day you just want to sleep away. But I felt pretty comfortable in the vintage van, you? I think it's really cool. Yeah. Well, 1968 vintage uh, trailer. Very cool.
You know, last night for me on this bridge was probably the, maybe the most nervous. You know, I know, you know, you're a non-believer. I don't necessarily believe in, you know, some aspects of it um, as well too. But it was interesting um, when we were asking questions and the response about the name and what the reaction was from a couple of the folks that were there instantly that heard at the same time what it was. And as they listened closer, it was something that might have said John. And they assumed it was John, the, one of the former owners, Arnold. So that was an interesting little piece right. there for sure. Yeah, I didn't hear that. I'll have to go back and listen because I was further away. Yeah. But the folks that right by it seemed to hear something. Yeah. Right? So, so I'm, I'm sure we'll be able to probably hear that. And, exactly. And and really, or because sometimes your mind will shape things too. Like you'll right. hear like, is that it? And when it says yeah. it, it's like, oh, you start hearing it. Maybe that was right. Right. So it was very interesting, but being on this bridge and just knowing right across the way is level 10. So that's the fear right. factor level 10 is at the end of that bridge. So I just think it's right when you're standing here, it's still, it feels so peaceful. Well, well that's you the thing. You're the running water. And that's the thing. I, you know, when you see the movie, you're thinking how sinister everything must be. But here it feels like, you know, again, like I just said, I'm, I tend to be more of a skeptic. But if there are spirits all around us and, who, you know, kind of talking to us and interacting with us, well, for the most part, it seems more positive, positive and playful. Positive and playful. Right, yeah. Yeah, and peaceful. That's kind of what we felt here. Now, everybody's going to have a different experience. Right, and right. I think it's according to your mind. Um, but, and, and according to, you know, I guess how much you want to present yourself to them and, and vice versa. That's that's my assumption. I was pretty pleased with this day. Oh, it was nice. It was actually a beautiful grounds. Yeah. You know, the host did a wonderful job. Yes. So thanks, everyone. Thanks, Jack yeah. and the team. Thank you guys so much. We had a, a very wonderful time being the first here yes. uh, to camp on the real Conjuring House property and to, to, to be a part of the experience. So thank you very much. So I think I want to take a few minutes, listen to that running water, get some ASMR in there, yeah. and uh, meditate and pack up and then we can shoot out of here. I like it. Let's get, do it. Get some coffee and breakfast. Mm, oh, now that's the kind of meditation I'm talking <laughs> about. <laughs>